Hello info person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing one of the most fascinating and one of the most incredible phenomena in outer space predicted by Einstein's theory of relativity. And in this case you can kind of see it behind me. Today we're going to be discussing gravitational lensing and specifically what's known as Einstein rings and Einstein crosses. But mostly because there was a recent extremely unusual discovery that for the first time shows us something that we've been looking for for a very long time. Yet another physical proof of the existence of the mysterious dark matter. All visible in this image that we're going to be discussing today. But just the fact that we can even see this phenomena is already quite mind-blowing. Mostly because even back in 1936, Albert Einstein wrote that there is no great chance of observing this phenomenon in real life. And little did he know that not only is it going to be possible, but it's actually going to help us uncover so many more mysteries about the entire universe. And that's because he really only considered stars acting as lenses. As a matter of fact, it was actually this picture that even made Einstein the most famous scientist in the 1920s. This was a 1919 picture of the solar eclipse taken by Sir Eddington, who essentially tried to see if this guy Einstein had maybe some kind of a really cool proposition, or if he was just basically crazy. And so he was actually able to travel and take a picture of the solar eclipse, proving that during the eclipse, because of a gravitational lensing, some of the stars actually shifted just a little bit, as predicted by Einstein's ideas. And that's kind of how Einstein became famous pretty much overnight. But what he could not imagine is that the power of modern telescopes is going to allow us to see so many more gravitational lenses, and not just around stars, but also around galaxies and galactic clusters. And so now, nearly 90 years later, we don't just observe these lenses, we use them to study things and to detect things we simply cannot see otherwise. Which is precisely what was discovered in 2025, based on the observations from instruments like ALMA and NOIMA. Because here this involved a really unique lens from a system referred to as HERS-3, a truly exceptional object that's helping us uncover the secrets of dark matter. But in case you have no idea how any of this works, let's I guess very briefly discuss how these lenses are created and why we see them in so many places. And so here at the heart, the idea involves mass. And so any massive object is going to warp the fabric of universe itself, the space-time, producing all sorts of bizarre phenomena and all sorts of unusual shapes, even some shapes that resemble smiley faces. And so all of this is the result of light from some kind of a really distant object getting warped by the mass or a massive object like a galaxy or some kind of a cluster in front of it, with this mass bending the path of light so much that it kind of forms something resembling a typical lens. And this was of course one of the main predictions in the general theory of relativity. But back in early 1900s, it was almost impossible to prove, except for maybe during a solar eclipse, where stars extremely close to the sun would then have their light and their position shifted just a little bit by the gravitational lensing effects from the sun itself. And that's what really happened with that picture during the 1919 eclipse. But gravitational lensing does come in different forms. For example, there's something known as the strong lensing. This is where we usually see visible distortions like multiple images, arcs, or even rings. And this is something that usually allows us to see super far away. Sometimes the magnification here can be in hundreds or even thousands of times. This is of course how we discovered some of the farthest stars ever seen. You can learn about some of the record holders in some of the videos in the description. But a typical Einstein ring is the most famous example of the strong lensing effect. There's also something known as the weak lensing. And this usually involves distortions that are very subtle, requiring a lot of statistical analysis and a lot of number of sources in order to measure the overall effects. And this is what scientists usually use to determine various masses, for example, for various clusters, in order to map dark matter and in order to test theories of gravity by looking at statistical distortions of various distant galaxies and galactic clusters. But lastly, we have something referred to as microlensing, which usually involves no noticeable distortion in terms of shapes, but does involve light from a background object, usually some kind of a star, temporarily becoming super bright and basically kind of flashing, because some kind of an object passed in front of it, such as normally another star or even some kind of a distant planet or a brown dwarf. We used to see a few of these every single year, but not because of some of the new telescopes that became operational in 2025. We actually expect to see hundreds if not thousands of these every single year. And this will allow us to see so many different objects, 
we could never see before, including hidden black holes and a lot of rogue planets. But usually what scientists find when looking at various distant galaxies is something like this. This is known as the Einstein cross and basically happens when the light from a distant galaxy or from some kind of a really bright object behind the galactic cluster creates several individual points visible right here that kind of resemble a cross. And what's interesting is that in this case, each of these represent a kind of a mirror image, but each of them arrives to us at different time scales. As a matter of fact, sometimes the time between the arrival can be in months or even years. And some of the most exciting such events usually involve some kind of a really distant supernova that we actually get to see at least four times, sometimes even more. Once again, a video in the description talks about one of the recent such discoveries that's helping scientists solve a lot of additional mysteries. And so, because we can see this from a distant galaxy, it means that, in theory, somewhere out there in a different galaxy far, far away, at some point it's also going to become possible to see our own galaxy in a very similar way, where it's going to basically produce mirror images, with each of these images containing a tiny, tiny pixel representing the solar system and planet Earth but in different time frames, basically showing us slightly different things. And so over decades, dozens and dozens of these gravitational lensing effects have been seen by various telescopes, including more recently the James Webb. As a matter of fact, the one from the James Webb released a few months ago was absolutely mind-blowing. This basically shows us a gravitational lens and a beautiful galaxy behind it that creates this absolutely gorgeous effect. But because so many of these images have already been seen, we generally have certain expectations about what should be seen and what we shouldn't be able to see at all. And so, for example, here we normally see the distant object producing a kind of a circle lens around the lens in the middle. In other words, what you see in the center is the closer massive object that plays the role of the lens, and the distant object is only visible as the ring around it. And something very similar happens with these Einstein crosses. The distant object is seen on the outskirts, with the middle object being the lens. But in 2025, researchers discovered something that's somewhat bizarre they found one of these Einstein crosses that seems to contain one of the mirror images right in the center. Which is in essence what we're discussing today and what this image is showing us. And so here, her S-3, which is a very distant dusty star forming galaxy, located at a redshift of 3, shows us an unprecedented lensing configuration with this bizarre gravitational cross that contains a fifth bright central image. Or in other words, just to rephrase this, that little image in the middle is not the lens, it's actually also the mirror image from the distant object that somehow ended up right in the middle where we should be observing the lens. And that kind of violates the initial explanation for how Einstein crosses should be produced. Now, first of all, we haven't really seen that many crosses yet, so we don't really know if this is common or not. But based on about a dozen discoveries that have been confirmed, none of them seem to have anything similar. Or well, basically, this is the first ever 5-image Einstein cross with one of the images right in the middle. And this was confirmed using molecular line analysis, where the analysis showed that each of the 5 images have identical redshifts and identical molecular composition. Or in other words, they come from the exactly same source. And all of this tells us so much about the structure of this lens and why it's unique compared to everything we've seen so far. Here, the foreground lens seems to be a group of at least 4 massive galaxies. Galaxies at a redshift of about 1. And these are really massive, quiet galaxies that contain a lot of old stars and don't produce a lot of new stars anymore. All of them seem to belong to a large galaxy group with at least 14 members within about a radius of 1.6 million light years. And because we know where these galaxies are located and because it's kind of possible to estimate their overall mass, astronomers were able to create sophisticated computer models in order to figure out how this mass is distributed and why it's able to produce that bizarre fifth lens. But when they just used these four galaxies, the model failed to recreate the same lens and there was no fifth image. And so in order to reproduce the observed properties of five images, and in order to recreate the position, brightness, shapes, and orientation, here researchers had to include an additional mass component that was absolutely huge. And this additional mass component had to be there and had to be located a little bit to the southeast of the brightest galaxy something like 200 light years away from it. But intriguingly, even though this would be the most massive object, here, based on the observations from these telescopes, no galaxy or any other massive object was detected anywhere near the position, with absolutely nothing visible to the Hubble Space Telescope, as if the space was completely empty. And so there's really only one explanation that kind of makes sense. This strongly indicates the presence of a massive dark matter halo. A halo that has to be here and has to be creating some of these lensing effects. 
Now, because we believe dark matter halos to be kind of invisible and only be visible because of gravitational landing effects, right now all of this does make sense, assuming dark matter is an actual particle. And since it's supposed to represent approximately 90% of total mass of the Milky Way galaxy, we expect something similar in this system as well. But naturally, because we've never seen a particle, it's still a kind of a contentious proposition, and there's still no exact explanation for what it is yet. Although intriguingly, in one of the recent videos, we've discussed a potential discovery of a sub-halo right here in the Milky Way using exactly similar effects. So you can check out that particular discovery in the description below. And so the main point here is that even in this cluster, or in this galactic group, the landing from her S-3 seems to be the result of the dark matter halo along with the additional galaxies. Because otherwise, there is just no other explanation yet, as there seems to be absolutely nothing in the region that would produce that fifth mirror image. But what about the image itself? What is this showing us? Well, this seems to be some kind of a starburst galaxy far, far away, and appears to be some kind of an edge-on galaxy, with a lot of molecular gas and massive amounts of outflow, with gas being expelled from the galaxy at very high speeds of 350 km per second. So basically a typical starburst galaxy, but in this case really far away. And based on the mass analysis, this galaxy seems to be magnified about 17 to maybe 19 times. So this is not a very high magnification, but the mass here is still significant enough to produce these bizarre effects. But obviously this was just the first observation, and additional observations using the James Webb and the ALMA telescope, which are already planned, will help astronomers to test predictions about dark matter and the formation of these gravitational landing effects, and will hopefully discover something else from this galaxy that's just been seen for the first time in this study. As a matter of fact, right now the model even predicts an additional lensed arc-like image that should also be visible between two of these galaxies. But because it would be kind of dim, right now this is just a prediction and it has not been detected yet. And so by observing this predicted arc, it would help scientists refine the lens model and obviously constrain the properties of this dark mirror halo possibly even taking us a little bit closer to answering the questions about its origins, or at least what it's made out of. But once again, because these images are technically also delayed, with the light arriving to us at different times, this is also an incredibly important cosmological probe for trying to figure out how fast the universe is expanding. And so here, by calculating the exact delays, which could be anywhere from a few days to maybe even a year, Astronomers can then calculate the expansion of the universe just based on these slight deviations, allowing the scientists to calculate Hubble constant, which is part of this other ongoing crisis referred to as the Hubble tension. The idea that maybe the Hubble constant is not a constant after all, and maybe the universe has been expanding at different accelerations during different periods. And so technically this is a really important discovery for a lot of cosmological fields. But at least for now this is just the first such discovery, so we don't really have much more info. And until future discoveries, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few more additional things. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.